Hey guys, it's me again, Orkslayer. What else? Why I last left off is Marasov and them just got done looking at Deku's trophy room. And I'll clarify some things. Right now, Mar not Marasov, but I'll say that Nana Shimura is a actually they've essentially done everything that they need to do, and they need to go down into the Hellmouth. But there's a itsy bitsy problem. You see, the Vanguard and Eris Morn have come to realize that there's actually a massive hive army around that whole thing. So they're not gonna, like, they're thinking about just, like, this thing can't be done. Eris Morn thinks on it and just. <sighs> she knows Deku's a very good killer of hive. And that he actually seems to kind of enjoy it. Because he... Because she says... From what we can tell, he's probably taken on a lot of Hive. With how quickly these things that have taken other fallen houses... Months to even come close. Maybe even years. Like, somewhat denting in their fort Not even fortifications. Their numbers. He does it within, like, an hour or so. So... She does the one thing. She literally walks up to Kate and tells him, Call the Fallen. He's like, I don't know what you mean. You know what I mean. I know he works for you sometimes. Call him. She's literally about to... And Kate's like, alright. He calls Deku up. Hey, Deku, I got a, uh, somebody on call here who wants to talk with you. He's like, alright. And she pops up. Who are you? My name is Eris Morn. I have a job for you. He's like, Ooh. she's like, it will require your full might. Where currently, I a fire team, uh, a team of guardians are about need to get to this location. Problem is, it's essentially there's essentially a massive hive army. Surrounding that, the Hellmouth. As she explains it, he's like, the Hellmouth. So, this is on the moon, yes? Pray tell, what is this great threat? And she's like, Crota. Son of Oryx. And as he says, explain. He will destroy this world. He's like, the Hive have... And I'll say Deku is aware of it, because it's believed, or at least I'm pretty sure it is, it's that it was actually Oryx himself who led the, well I've said this before, but it was the Hive who de devastated his world. So he also ha has a particular hate, not for personal experiences, but for what they had done. It was the fault, the hive who drove his people nearly to extinction. It was the hive who drove, like, made the, not made the traveler abandon. Actually, yes, made the traveler abandon them. He views everything that has happened to the elixir as not only the hive's fault, but also the fault of the fallen and themselves to just end up becoming nothing more than ruthless gangs. Or mafias at the very most. And in the middle ground cartels. Because mafias are at least professional. Cartels. It varies. As far as I know at least. And what happens is. Is that he's like. How big. How many. I will kill them all. And. So. And I'll say Zavala and Ikora out there. Ikora is trying to like tell. I. Is like, she's like, we could ma amass forces. And she's like, no. Crota must not be drawn out by the light. It must be an incursion from a different race. He's like, how many? Maybe at the very least a thousand. I'll say Deku has bolstered his numbers quite a bit. So I could, I'll say he's at 800. Sure, he takes losses here and there. Deku's like... What is payment? And Cade is thinking about this. Uh, can we just save it up to an IOU? He's like, 
this is big favor. But I will do it. Hi, as I probably just said, he's like, Hi, you are responsible for everything. The fall, the fall of the Elixir, the destruction of our home world. We shall see them dead, personally. And I'll say Deku even riles up some of the House of Exile, talking to a few of the captains and maybe a baron or two. Like the female baron that he's talked to, he's like, There is great threat underneath in the Hellmouth. Crota, Breaker of Worlds, Looms. And as he says this, these are ones he's like gained the, not loyalty, but somewhat of a friendship with. And he speaks to him. I've made deal with guardians. As this is said, one of the captains like gets up like, What? Why? He's like, Guardians, only ones who can kill Krota. None of us. We do not bear the light. But the light will burn Krota. But there is problem. What? An army of hives stands between them and their objective. I ask for your help. We have roughly equal numbers, but you could push t tips, scales in our favor. We fight. Guardians owe us favors. We could ask for smart, a very large favor. And as this is said, they discuss amongst themselves. All of them are on board after like a long and lengthy debate. He's like, do not worry. You will be armed with our weapons. As they say, what their own fears. Yours are subpar. Mine, top of the line. So as they like all get ready, like the captains are armed with better shields and better shear shields and harder hitting weapons as long as well as their crews and their ships are also outfitted Deku also has them like take off the exile colors so they don't like get like sorta of jumped on by some of the others so Deku deploys his full might every single ship every single shank servitor even the heavy slug throwers and missile packs are being utilized for this single battle what and Deku even lands the tank now. They have modified it so it can be more stable and such, and like zero g gravity. I'm pretty sure, yeah, zero g gravity. So as they have this, they like Deku has all his forces land everything. The spider tanks marching in the back. Several, like I would say maybe uh, 500 shanks are about. And this hive army is, there is just a lot. Even some of the swarm princes are literally like commanding this force. Deku rallies his entire team like giving another heartfelt speech saying that the hive drove us. Like shouting in Elixir and such. Just like saying the hive drove us from our world. Tore down our world and blah and force us to become scavengers. They are the true enemy. We will kill them all. Now fight for the elixir. As they like charge forward, Deku rushes forward. He's bring every single one of his like soldiers are bringing their best equipment. Dobby and them have set up their, their... Dobby's demolitions are bringing out every single thing they have. Dobby can't really use mortars since it's zero-g gravity. But the Cabal weaponry, like the scout rifles and slug throwers, can actually be used in zero-g gravity because they're actually essentially micro-rockets. So, he essentially equips all his, like, men with those. <laughs> Instead of their typical thing. And these micro-rockets are tearing through Hive Thrall and even night some Acolytes and Knights. Deku has his ships, like, dropping suicide shanks, like, bombing runs. 
Deku's on the ground leading this force, blasting hundred, like dozens of high with every single blast because of the massive swarm that's approaching them. Now, before that happens, Deku has his like close, like melee specialist, like. Essentially, this is led by Kaminari himself, because, like I said, Kaminari is like a melee specialist. So he's essentially similar to the World Eaters, or the Black Templars from, uh, from the 40k Warhammer. So if you don't know, the, the Black Templars and the, uh, World Eaters are highly specialized in melee combat. Aside, whereas the World Eaters will just still madly charge at you, the Black Templars actually know that their bodies are much more resistant to damage and such, so they take advantage of this. As well as the fact that they don't entirely run headfirst into melee combat, that's just their preferred strategy. But if they have to, they will, They if there is a more advantageous approach to do it, even if that isn't melee combat, they will totally do it. But this is sort of how Kaminari works. His melee specialists and such like rush into position. These guys are the most heavily armored and biggest and toughest of out of all of them. And they don't just carry sabers, they carry things like they have like a... I guess best way to say it is claws attached to their armor and such. Some of them even have like axes, hammers, swords, shields. These guys are like essentially like medieval. They're like head to toe in armor, no capes or anything, and just bashing through holding this line. While Dobby's teams like lob grenades, I guess, to like a point where they don't necessarily fall down, but they are affected by like just fragmentation, explosions, all that. Scout, there's. Slug rifles? I forget what they are specifically called. I believe it's a slug rifle. Are laying into the thrall. The the exiles are sort of using their expertise on hive tactics, which is essentially swarming. So they have developed somewhat special strategies. So they're pulling their moves and actually sort of gave the knowledge they know on how to high fight. Which Deku is putting to use very expertly. Now, the catch is unloading on this, like, horde. The skiffs and such are making sure Hive stay in this perimeter. So then the swarm princes approach. Deku can seize this, and as they do have drawn this massive army away, that's when the guardians come and land, it, land down and come and approach. They say, man, the Hive... The Hive, well, I will say they've all been made aware. So this team comprises of Sato, Jiro, uh, Nana Shimura. I will say they actually send a lot more Guardians, because I never understood why. Why do they only send six? I can understand it's like, three is the perfect thing to get anything done. But, seriously, you're going to kill a god. Send the most, not the most powerful, but some of the best. So, let's see, one, two. I'll say Endeavor, Sato, Nana Shimura, Suyu, oddly enough, Bakugo, and for the final one, well, they need a warlock, so. Hunter, Titan, Titan, Hunter, Hunter, they need a Warlock, so I'll say they sent, uh, Monoma, Momo, Monoma or Momo, huh. I'll say they actually send Momo, Momo, Jiro, Endeavor, Nanashimura, Sato, and Bakugo. Two, two, and two. All right, there we go. I got that sorted out. Now they go down to the hell mouth and do that whole raid, going running from lamp to lamp, 
And since I will say some of the forces in the Hellmouth may have gone up, so there's a lot less to deal with. Deku's essentially eliminated like over half the army that's like been stationed out there to like ensure people don't like mess with Crota. And as they, they've taken some losses, not a lot. So I'll say for like this army of like, and I'll just say most of these consist of Shanks. Servitors are in the back, also blasting apart Thrall and Acolytes. So now come the Swarm Princes, particularly powerful Hive. So as they rush forward with their, with their swords and such, Deku actually pushes forward and takes out his two swords and starts slashing through along with Kaminari's heavy, like heavy infantry is the best way to say in the mask. Just starts slicing through and makes his way to the Swarm Princes. The Hive are losing and are actually being pushed back. The main, they've exhausted their thralls, and now the Ogres are being pushed forward. They're being focused down on by uh, Dobby's little group of demolitions by having them focus on just tearing apart those things. With the Walker and the actually twice, twice crewing the tank, just blasting them apart. Mina at this point is just like using her two pistols, just... If you've ever seen, like, a, uh, I don't know, uh, I forget her name, but she's from Underworld, and how she's doing is, or even, uh, Zoe? Zoe from Left for Dead, and how she's just, like, shooting with her two pistols, just switching back and forth. That's how they are. Deku, not Deku, Mina's doing that. With Toga pushing forward along with Deku. And his even his personal bodyguard are pushing headlong into like this swarm of hive. And they're actually pushing the hive back. These guys are like his top fighters. Like essentially common Kirishima said that he can't really always like be around to protect Deku because he's often going off on missions. So he has recruited his best members, essentially, in his melee combat to essentially guard Deku. He says they are essentially good enough that they could kill, that they could probably take on a Kel by themselves. But all of them are like, he didn't just look for like who are the best, he's also lo looked for who's the most loyal and essentially fanatical. They're literally throwing themselves into death to, like, protect Deku. They're like the death core of Krieg, for crying out loud, is what they're doing. Or even the custodians. They're cutting through massive swaths of hive, blasting them apart, and just rolling through. Deku, like, Scorch Cannon sort of runs out, so he, like, using the Zero-G, he tosses it all the way back. Not Scorch Can, actually. He's just still slicing through the high with his sabers. And finally, the Swarm Princes. Three of them, exactly. I don't know how many there are, to be exact, but I know there's a few of them. Sorta? Uh, not Sorta. Uh, Zardon? Or something. The Hand of Crota? Which is, I believe, the one who actually holds command of them. Of the, of the Swarm Princes. That's why he's referred to as the Hand. But anyways, he, like the three of them rush forward, Deku like kicking two, like not kicking two, but sort of using his four arms to block each of their blades. If you don't know, like his two lower arms are again, he has his like two daggers or two like, yeah, two daggers. And he's like sort of sword fighting every single one of them using each of his eyes to keep an eye out. But he's also using that, like, final eye to, like, keep an eye on his surroundings. Because he's realized he's kind of pushed very deep. But at this point, Kirishima's, like, forces are pushing up very quickly. The Hive are pretty much being... And they've lost a few members. The Exiles are still holding strong. But they've lost, like, over hundreds of Shanks and, like, maybe a dozen or so fallen. Well, not even a... Not, more than a dozen. I'll say they've probably lost over 
a hundred, maybe two, like 150 fallen in this entire thing. And this is pretty low considering they've taken on like an, maybe like a thousand, maybe two. Some of you may think this is kind of far-fetched. Well, think about this. Deku's employing tactics. The Hive are just throwing them, themselves at him. He's using a lot of explosives, better tactics, and the main thing is that this is consisting of Thrall. They're trying to swarm him and, like, crush him, but thanks to his Scorch Cannon, well-placed grenade things and everything, they've been able to just sort of war... It's not a war of attrition, it's a war of superior tactics. They will keep them at bay while Demolitions and other teams... As well as that, they're using skiffs and their ships. They're blasting apart m dozens of hive. Not even dozens, like hundreds of hive, like with every single passing by. Like a couple hundred, like a hundred hive or so. Maybe even like several dozen are blown up in a single strafing run. And he's having this continuously. So, yeah. The hive aren't the best strategic. Especially when it comes to Thrall and other things. They don't really have strategy, they just throw themselves. Hoping to overwhelm you with numbers. And Deku's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cabal, so... He knows how to fight back with strategy to overcome better strategy and also mindless hate. But as I get back to it, Deku's going one-on-one -on -one with all these sword swarm princes. And slowly but surely kills each and every single one of them. The first one he blocks and then like sort of lets the sword slides off and he decapitates it. The second one he focuses his efforts and slices it down pretty quickly. The third one, which is the last one, is like like breaks off a bit and like jump gets it back so that way he can like take a proper stance. Rushes forward with like one swing. Deku catches, sort of dodges, and then just impales him through and just, like, raises his body up and, like, tears him apart. Showing this, like, power to the hive, as well as this point, they've sort of killed Omnigal and this. So, as they're, like, as the other hive see this, they get terrified and start retreating. Deku goes on about, like, the rest of his forces, eliminating them all one by one. So, yeah. After the final battle with the this fleet, they give, like, a... Deku, like, looks around them, out in, like, the piles of Hive and such. I'm not sure entirely that the Hive disappeared entirely. I think that's maybe just a game of pan a mechanic or... But I'm not entirely sure. So. I'll say as they look around this battlefield. Several swords. Shredders. Bodies of ogres. And such. They're all just lying about. As Deku stands on top of like where he defeated the swarm princess. He gives a roar in victory. Followed by Avril, like several other cheers. The Exiles are still untouched, but Deku's forces are tired and battered from this very, very tough battle. They're, were, they were pushed to their limits to take on this amount of Hive. Especially since they were commanded, and mm, some of the tougher ones, essentially since they had Ogres, the Swarm Princes, Princes, and like other things. So, as they like call contact with Eris Morn, they're like, Hive army defeated. All is left is for your guardians to kill Crota. So as they like start packing up and moving towards the thing, Deku doesn't really see any trophies, see anything that's worth to take as a trophy. So they're like, we retreat. <laughs> so as they just like all not... They don't retreat, they just set up and get ready to move out. Then, the, after the Guardians get done, and they, they're just like, Oh, we did it. Oh, as they, like, all collapse after a lengthy battle of Crota. And I don't know if 
Crota's voice like is heard by anything else. So I'll say maybe everyone on the entire moon heard it or something. I'm not sure because I know what Oryx heard it. So they hear this and I'll say it's in English. That's a cry to Oryx to finish what he started or whatever. <sighs> Deku is just like, oh shit. Well, that means they kill Crota, so the first, so the first world-ending thing is done for. <sighs> all right, all you, let's go home. I'll say it's been like what? So Deku was, let's see, last time I said he was 21. Within these months. In the series, I'll say like 22, maybe 23. I'm not sure. He was 21 when that started. Well, yeah, 21, 22. I'll say maybe at the very least 24, maybe 25 at the most. So, he's been fighting for a long time, and that's why he's also, his crew is also on the toughest. And how I've said, he's a true commander. So, as they're like, you owe us favor. And as Deku, like, saw the, how they fought the exiles, he actually offers them a place among his crew. That if they ever want to get off the moon and killing Hive... They're more than welcome to join his crew, because he explains that he does follow a Kel, but that is him alone. If they do not want to serve the Kel, they don't have to. They just bring him, They he just sends them out on missions. He will personally answer to a Kel. They don't have to bow before him. So as some of them think about this, all of them essentially say yes, because essentially he upgraded their arsenals. And that they saw he just waged a war, essentially a miniature war against the Hive. And they can tell that, and some of the captains can tell that some of the Vandals and such are pretty tall. Even taller than their, their Vandals. So the Baroness and her captains and such that follow her join Deku, Deku's crew. So he's essentially invited her in. And if you guys want to come up with a name for her, do it. But Deku's letting him know that his second command, his, like, his inner circle is the ones who primarily take control of certain sections. So if you're falling under, like, military, like, to be in the fighting force, you will fall under Kirishima's direct command. And Kirishima's much, like, much larger, not much larger, so I'll say it's like 11 to 12 feet is how tall Deku is. So Kirishima's like 9 feet. These captains are like 7 or 8. 7? Yeah, 7 feet tall. This Baroness is like 8. So, if they understand that Kirishima and Toga are his like, essentially his lieutenants is the best way to describe it or captains act like they are his personal captains and that everyone else is like sort of like a lieutenant or another like how Mina's like Kirishima's second in command Dobby his like is his own individual thing piece but he generally falls under Kirishima's jurisdiction while as Kaminari sort of since he gathers information in such around areas, he sort of falls under Toga. He gives the explanation on how his entire crew works. That if... And that they'll bear his colors and such. So they agree to this and they leave. And as soon as they get on board, he's also... We will be getting rid of the dregs dock, docking caps. And the dregs are also excited about this. Though this is not enough to replenish all his losses, he will be able to replenish them relatively quickly. Because like I said, anytime a major battle like this is happening, Deku actually generally does go by and like go back. Uh, he generally sends 
like Hansakura and Shima, like, send out people to, like, go recruit dregs and such. Because, as I've said before, he prefers to mold them into his form of a fighting force and such. So, as they're, like, about to leave, the Guardians get out of the helmet. They're like, oh. As they see, like, the battlefield as Deku's commanding his forces back onto his ship... Suyu's so like, oh. As she starts walking toward. Nana Shimura starts walking towards Deku as he starts walking towards them. Me, not Mina, but. I'll say. the All the time. All the guardians get up and start following at her as well. As they approach, he's just like. Dead? Dead. Well done. We suffered losses, but we will recuperate. All oh, you have safe journey home. And he actually takes a look a second to look at Suyu. Still hunting me. As he says that, well stop. Or don't. I don't care. As they can see, he actually does have some injuries from, like, little cuts and stabs that he received. And if his armor's kind of dirty, so he's like, I go home. Recruit more. Be ready. I can tell this is not the last we hear of the blood of Oryx. Another will come. Maybe even himself. But we shall see later, Guardians. As he goes back and just sort of walks onto the ship, he also says, I also commend your bravery. Not many say they can, they have killed a god. <sighs> so he's in dubs, so he's like, see you later, god slayers. As he gets back on, he just, like, all the soldiers are getting checked out by essentially their medics. Like, several of them are in, like, essentially a med bay. Uh, like I said, I don't know if the devil splicers or such are also their medics, but I'll say they are. And they're checking them out like, oh god, they're bleeding a lot. And so, Eris Morn essentially, like, contacts Deku saying... I heard you take, took on the hive and killed some of the swarm princess. He's like, yes. Not particularly powerful. Very boring. But he's like... Crota is dead, but... Feeling this is not the last we've heard of Oryx. Or his bloodline. We will have to wait. Agreed? Agreed. If you ever need anything help with Hive, call me. And Cade also like says, hey, uh, sorry buddy about that. He's like, no need to apologize. Just when I call favor, you repay it in kind. He's like, oh, I understand, yeah. So he's like, see you later, Cade. Oh. And then it's like, whoop, oh, not whoop, and just cancels it. She's like, I am going to sleep. The crew on the ships are like, well rested and such, so they're just taking over a majority. He goes, gets Yonabe, and then just go collapses into his bed. Oh. And just falls asleep very quickly. And there's a time skip to a few months later. He's just sleeping one day and then just boop. And it's like uh, the awoke queen of the Awoken is calling you. He's like, oh, uh, maybe even four months. He's like, what is it? Can I not sleep? He gets up. And he doesn't even bother putting on his armor. He's just walking in there. Doubless without any pants. Not without any pants, but without any shirt. 
And what happens is, is that he answers the call and goes to video with uh, Aldrin, Mara, and Aerie sitting there. He's like, well, what? As he like look at him for a second, like his body it has like scars over it. You called. Tell me what it is. She's like, Skolos has escaped. He's like, Skolos, the rabid, tell of wolves or previous tell. She explains that Skolos and several of the wolves that used to be part of her that used to be part of the Awoken have turned traitor and returned to him. He's like, what do you want? Skolos is a threat and a danger. He's going to Venus to try and apparently try to... He sent several envoys and he's actually... Some of the wolves have heard about your alliance, so he's sending several barons to try and convince your Kelves to kneel. It was long with a se like a severe detachment of fallen. He's going for the stags first. Deny him the house. They may even come to try to gain your loyalty. Cause I'll say a lot of the dregs that would have followed Skolos. Don't. They have stayed behind and actually actively helped the Awoken fight against the Vandals and captains who still held loyalty to Skolos, who has been cl started calling him the Kel of Kells. As this happens, like, these, I guess, uh, traitor wolves, as the other wolves would call them, <laughs> shout that they're, the Kel of Kells has been found. Baron of Panthers is true Kel of Kells. So Deku has his own fanatics following him. Skolos hears about how Deku is like this proclaimed Kel of Kells. That some are saying that he is truly what the prophecy has been waiting for. So he seeks to either have Deku bent, bow beneath him or Deku be crushed to prove like the sort of if if the sort of like the old thing of the gods will decide who is right by trial by combat sort of thing. So Skolos is not immediately going for Deku. He seeks to claim over ownership over other houses first. So he's heard that if De and he hears that Deku is also loyal to the lion Kel of Lions. So, he sends several barons and such in a large attachment of the Fallen. So, he's like, you wish for me to stop him. And I'll say they've rebuilt their numbers from back then. They've, like, been on the down low of just fixing up everything. So, he's like, yes, find him and stop him from gaining any more ground. Nana Shimura is also called upon. She will go to Venus and deny him the house of the house of winter while Deku will stop him like from gaining the loyalties of other smaller houses so Deku sets off and like goes and inter not intercepts but after s the house of stags and such the Kel has met with like a baron several barons to like discuss how Skolos and such and how they should bow beneath him Deku sees the wolves and such and he lands down like Walking up with his detachment of his personal bodyguards, the Panthers got the Panther Guard, and burst into where the Kel. The the stags were about to like the open hostilities were about to happen. Deku walks in and he tells the wolf barons that they either leave or die. No one will bow to Skolos, this so-called Kel of Kells. And some of them say, you are Deku, the so-called Chelsix Reborn, or whatever I said that they called him. As they, like, say, 
they realize that they really don't don't want to mess with Deku because they see the size of him. And they can tell just by looking at him that he could have easily, that he, if he wanted to, he could have easily killed this, the House of Stag, Skell, and just taken over it by force if he wanted to. But he didn't. So they like back off. Skolos will hear of this. I... You better tell him. As he, like, his Toga and Kirishima go around denying the, like, several, like, minor houses, like, as minor as the House of Stag, Skolos is going for everything. Not just the major, but also the minor houses. Because he realizes that if he can't get the major ones, he must grab the smaller ones, so that way he can at least become formidable in his own right. So as the barons gain a few loyalties from the smaller houses, and being denied some of the other ones, Deku has managed to like severely hinder his progress. And so eventually, after being chased from Venus, and Nanashimura thwarting the thing of Yavix? Was it Yavix? Skivix? Whoever. From getting kings, or Paz... Pashik? Oh. Whatever their names are, their names are weird. And that has happened after she killed that negotiation. Deku has also been getting reports from Petra Vinch how the wolves have gained some numbers. And that he's to somewhat... Sorry, give me a second. Huh? I was... <coughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, but he's to deny skull, and that skull loss has sent Tanix. I'm not sure why Tanix was hired. I just knew he was for some reason, but I'm not entirely sure. Deku is sent after Tanix. First of all, now as Tanix like sorta is running away, Deku boards his ship. After like fighting through the hive. And he's doing this with his Panther Guard as well. They're rushing forward. And he's bashing through them. Crushing several fallen House of Wolves and several Hive alike. And he walks up and sees and crushes those who are guarding Skolos' his little teleportation thing. And as that happens, Deku says... Skolos, not Skolos, Tanix, too long. Let's finish what we started. So as he charges forward, they come clashing. But this time, they intend to kill each other. As Deku, like, throw, as they get, like, thrown back and forth, Tanix is very skilled. He's very skilled mercenary, so as he, like, retreats for a bit, he retreats back up. Deku following suit with... Actually, his panther's guard's being cut off. Because they were, like, covering his back, keeping Hive in. He's like, retreat. Don't let Hive kill you. I will take Tanix. So as he goes through the entire ship, le like, essentially slaughtering any fallen that's dumb enough to get in his way of killing Tanix. He's seen to this because he's also heard that Tanix is the one who killed Andal Rask. Kate is his friend, and he's also heard that the major bounty that's been put on his hand, not just by the Reef, but by Kate himself. So he's like, two bounties, one bird. Very good. So as he bashes his way across Tanix's catch, Tanix still does that whole thing, and Varric still's like, Tanix challenges you in the ways of old. Fight well, Deku, as the whole thing gets cut off. He bashes his way through the ship, and like I said, killing any fall that's dumb enough to get in his way. Several of them are just, like, backing off as he, like, hunts Tanix through his own ship. Till he gets to that one place where he was at, which I have no idea it is. Even if Fallen Walker doesn't get activated, it's still there, but it's just not activated. After he comes to, like, this final challenge with Tanix, after his entire crew is there. 
No, I'm not sure if this crew is loyal to him or not. I just know Tanix has been hired as a mercenary. So with that, Tanix will be killed by Deku after a pr another prolonged exchange. After they exchange some words, he's like, "Very high bounty on you. I intend to collect." He's like, "Kill me," and he's like, "If I." Kill if you kill me, Skulls will be happy if I kill you. But if you kill me, uh, you get my catch. So you can see where this is going. After another grueling fight, Deku just brings Tanix to his knees and decapitates him. His head goes rolling. <sighs> Deku telling the crew that's loyal to, that the crew that is here because of Skolas and the wolves to get out. He and they can't do anything because they respect tradition too much. So Deku has his forces come over and take command of the ship, take taking down his colors and putting up his instead. So he has two catches now, and Skolas hears about this that Deku has killed Tanix the Scarred. And they take his body away and everything. So, Deku reports his success to the Awoken and Varix, as well as Kate. He's like, Tanix is dead. He... I got a new catch. As well. This is good. So, he also has full access to his cybernetics... And all this as well. Which. Mostly a few fallen could use some cybernetics. Just saying that. Like some of them have like gotten damaged eyes. And other things along the like. So. Deku would like to offer these to his crew. So that way they can. Because some of them feel unhappy. That they aren't as good. Or as combat effective as they used to be. So he says. Gives orders to his splicers to give like some of these enhancements ready for implantation, and so he gives essentially the his crew full access to these, not to like remove all like non damaged parts to with metal, but to just replace the parts to make them more combat effective. This endears them even more so, especially these, uh, fault, like, veterans and, like, I guess the best way to say it, cripples or whatever, or disabled ones, the ability to fight again in honor of Deku and his house, in a way. So, even more so, like, Deku's getting this thing that he's a sort of benevolent and righteous fallen or any Lixney. Some are saying he's the one who has truly earned the name Elixney again. Even Varric seems to think so. And then he gets more information that Nana Shimura has been given information about Skolas. How they're trying to get into the vault. Deku lands down with his panther guard as well as like, well his inner circle actually. To come and take Tanix as well as his Panther Guard. As at the same time, Nana Shimura arrives like, Hey, Deku's been a while. He's like, yeah. Let us go bag us a wolf. As he approaches and just sees a mountain of Vex and Vandals and such, Deku approaches and then just sees Skolos shouting at him and then running away after blasting a few scorch cannons and they blast forward he's like he has run away the vex want to get rid of skolos so they sort of stabilize it so deku and his like group can move around as they get to the final thing they destroy the portal so tanix can't sum not tanix but skolos can no longer summon any more of the house the Fallen, not the Fallen, yeah, the House of Wolves Fallen, because that's what he does, is that, sorry if none of you have played the game, but, spoilers, well, it's a very old game, but, 
<coughs> what he hopes to do through Vex technology and bring the entire House of Wolves through time to the present. So, yeah. And everything that he stopped at and all of his forces are exhausted. He just like wants to satisfy his own ego. So he challenges Deku in the ways of old. Deku looks back at him. He's like, I will handle this. As he like drops his weapons. Like hand to hand combat this time. Unlike with Tanix who they've agreed to armed combat. Skolas lunges at Deku. Truly powerful that he could have killed Tanix. But Deku is just as powerful, fighting with a fury. Full Skolas fights like a rabid animal, lunging and clawing and biting. Deku fights with a fury of all his own, with not hate, but sort of. Hmm, I don't know, like righteous or whatever might. That he sees that Skolas is what. Is one of the things that brought the phone so low. Just hate is what brought them. Hate and greed is what brought them so low, but he does understand Skolos in a way. Skolos believes that he can fulfill the fulfill, not fulfill, fulfill the prophecy that was said that the Kel of Kelts will unite all of houses and make the fallen great again. He understands that much. But he sees Skolas as just being not the right one. So as he bashes Skolas into the ground, first breaking off his lower arms, then smashing him in, getting on top of him, and just smashing him in the face, like right, left, right, left, after sort of straddling him, like sort of getting on top of him, and just hitting his face, and just finally, like, Hits it one last time, completely knocking him out. After this happens, he like stands up and just gives a roar. Down with the false skull of girls! <sighs> After like, Nana Shimura is just like wow, and then like all the others just start like cheering as well. Oh hell, the Baron of Panthers! And after Skolos is taken away by the Queen, well. Deku's give Deku and the Queen a not Queen, but Deku, Nanshimura, and I'll say Kate has been able to leave the tower for the short time, and they sort of prepare a ceremony to like reward them for being, I guess heroes or whatever. Like he's like, you both come forward. Deku walks forward, as well as Nanashimura, as these two are the ones who put down this wolf rebellion, essentially single-handedly. Deku, like, lending his forces, which didn't really get that damage, but denied the fallen House of Wolves, where they could have easily just joined them. Because they know how Deku wants, and that if they thought Deku... They actually, this crossed his mind, that what if Deku does think that Skullos is what's good for the houses? So, as Deku, like, kneels before, I guess in a way, kneels before the Queen... She sort of gives, uh, I don't know what's a good reward, but she essentially names him a trusted ally of, ally of the Fallen. That if anything, that she would actually personally ask him that he takes command of the remaining wolves. Because a lot of them are drags who are essentially fanatics of Deku. And as this is said, like... There's like a horde of fallen that like of the dregs and such and I'll say the captain that was there for Deku is like cheering as well. She essentially names him that the time ever comes that he changes his mind about just following the Kel the Kel of Lines and she wishes to serve him serve her entirely, that he will be named commander of the fallen forces. And this is a pretty high honor, because a lot of these fallen forces are split up between Petra, Marasov, and Aldrin, as well as Variks. The forces are split up for them. 
And for him to be named the sole commander of them? Well, that's just very prestigious as well. Deku thanks her for the honor, but he will hold off for a while. And this has like been a month long after like of constantly denying the devils. And the, Deku hasn't just gone after Tanix. He's fought at multiple barons who have actually pushed their luck and have been utterly annihilated by him essentially just killing them. But those who did that generally were idiots. There were a few of them, more than a few of them, tried to like test their might against Kirishima. But he essentially just instantly murdered them. And that will be the end of this. This is a pretty long video. I'm sorry. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you all have a nice day, nice night, nice life. And thank you again.